first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. State of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs> Peace. We got a show for you tonight. This is Dr. Alim, and we will be going over basically the Omex and how they were the last rulers of this Western Empire. Now, for those who don't know the story about the Omex or the Xi people, um, let's get into some of that information in a few seconds here. Right now, what we're going to talk about um, is the cruise, all right? Um, United Washington, D. Doug Demonia. Um, has a cruise coming up March 21st through 25th, um, 2013. Hopefully everyone who are listening to this voice of mine will be able to make it. Um, also, um, what we're going to be doing is going over some of this info that I'm going over right now, but into probably even to a more large extent. All right, so just um, check that out. And, of course, um, um, payments or you know, for those who need uh, financial arrangements, those things can be made. Um, you can call the number 770-485-8065. That's 770-485-8065. Or email us at www, um, well, Royal House, R-O-Y-A-L, H-O-U-S-E, 777 at gmail.com for more information. Uh, once again, that's Royal House 777 at gmail.com. That's R O Y A L H O U S E. All right, so let's get into the information. Um, all we got to start with some of the oldest information because most of us don't know what this information actually um, contains as far as the importance of it as far as to our very existence on planet Earth. But if you go to Scientific American Magazine, um, it was June 5th, 1852, the issue in which that dealt with a report about blasting carried out at the Meeting Hill Rock in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Now, the blast discovered tons of rocks described by the United States Geological Survey as pudding stone, which date back over 600 million years old. That's 600 million years old. 
Now, what they found in there was a bell-shaped metallic vessel, all right? That's what was blown out, which was about four inches high and was covered with exquisite carving, all right, or possibly writing, indicating the presence of artistic metal workers over 600 million years ago. Now, that's phenomenal. That's really phenomenal, you know, because... That's right here in the so-called United States of America. And uh, what we always say is that the United States is of America. America is not of the United States. So one has superiority. Um, all right, and we'll get into that in a second. But the fact is that that was right here, and that dated back over 600 million years ago. So there obviously were humans or humanoid um, people on a planet over 600 million years ago, and that's 400 million years before the continental drift. According to scientists, they claim that the continental drift took place 200 million years ago, all right, at least 200 million years ago, in which that the um, continents, you know, began to drift apart from each other into the present position in which that we're in now, two million years later. However, this was 400 million years before that even occurred, so this means that this is when all of the continents were still together and it was known or referred to as Pangea or Mu, or, or, um, or um, Asia, as it is referred to as, all right? Um, of course, if you get any information dealing with the um, Kabbalah, um, Asia happens to be um, the earthly realm, all right? Or dealing with the word body. So it's talking about the body of earth, earth body, in that particular uh, regard, and that's what um, also your physical body is Asia, or Asia, all right? So... When we go to a book, another book is referred to as What They Never Told You in History Class by Indu Kemet Kush. He got a chapter in this called The First Americans Were Black, in which that, um, there's a scholarly Latin author by the name of C.C. McQuise, who explains that the strong possibility is that black people were the first people in the Americas out of which later came the red American race, or the Native Americans as they referred to as, or Indians as they referred to as. But you know that the word Indy, um, means black or dark skin or dark complected. Um, so when they are referring to um, even the so-called red race, they are still referring to us in that regard. Um, matter of fact, um, he goes on to say it is likely that we repeat the long ago that youthful America was also a Negro continent and that the Otani of Mexico, which is talking about the Omex, and the Cocola, uh, Cocola of Haiti, and the Mataya of Brazil and the Albinos or the Albions of Panama or the remains of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which developed later what is known as the Red or American race. Now, you get this from his book, um, The Studies of um, Archaeological and um, Archaeological Finds and Ethnicity, all right? Um, the volume one written from um, Madrid, Madrid um, in 1920. Of course, that's the English transliteration of it. It's actually written in Spanish. Um, when we get to Unexpected Faces in Ancient America by Professor Alexander von Wittenut, he states that the presence of Negroes with their trading masters in America before Columbus. All right? Say Professor Leo Weiner and that it is proven by the, rep, um, by the representation of Negroes in America, statues and designs, but most specifically by Columbus emphatic refer, um, reference to Negro traders from Guinea, right, who traffic in a gold aloe, precisely the same composition and bearing the same name as frequently referred to by early writers in Africa. Now, you can get this from his book, African, um, Africa and the Discovery of America. All right? Um, in another book, it's called History, um, The General History of Mexico, 1919. Um, it goes into that blacks were the original people of Mexico. All right? You can also get that in J. Rogers' volume one of Sex and Race. So, when we get into this, you're going to have to keep all of this in mind as you continue going through this information. 
Now, also in the book, um, it speaks of another scholar, Mexican scholar, as a matter of fact, Viva Palacio, in which that states this point that it is indisputable that in very ancient times, the Negro race occupied our territory, Mexico. The Mexicans recall a Negro god, Isleton, which means black face. Okay? So, this is a lot of references in which that can be utilized for uh, verification. Now, another thing in which that Professor uh, Weiner, Leo Weiner, um, of um, Harvard University, how he pointed out in his um, Africans and the Discovery of Africa, volume three, however, he states that the identity of the spiritual civilization down to the remote detail in the Sudan and in Mexico and elsewhere in America leads to the assumption that other cultural elements, it says that the identical in both continents and the frequently bearing the same name are of African origin. So he connects Sudan and Mexico as far as the origin of these um, Omex, all right? Now, in another book called Ancient Egyptians and Chinese in America, written by R.A. Um, Jaraz, Jaraz Badi, he writes that the blacks began his career in America, not as slaves, but as masters. All right, now remember, just keep all of this in mind. Because when you get another article it was written by Paul A. Barton, um, it's called The Omex, an African Presence in Early America. Um, a lot of this information is taken from Ivan von Sertima's, um book of um, Africans in um, um, Presence in Early America. Um, and when you get into the information, he writes, this article was written February the 28th, 2001. Right? It was supposedly in celebration of Black History Month. All right now, according to the archaeologists who recently, um, you know, did archaeological work in Mexico, one of the most ancient civilizations in the Americas, the Black Nacriti, um, Omex, developed a calendar that goes back to 3,113 years before Christ. Now, of course, we you know what this calendar becomes. They refer to it as the Mayan calendar. But yet, um, we know that it was um, actually... Um, done by the Omex. All right? Now, there was an um, archaeologist who appeared on the Art Bell show some years ago, and he stated that the um, ancient Omex of Mexico and Mesoamerica are one of the most um, intriguing civilizations of the Americans. In fact, they are the first civilization in Mexico and it was from them that all other civilizations in Mesio America followed. All right. Now, what this means is, is that not that it was the um, necessarily just the first people. Of course, we just finished going through the science that there was people already over here dating back to 600 million years ago. However, in modern day times, the Omex have to, had the oldest civilization dating back thousands of years before. Um, the Christian era, all right? So it says, yet the fact that the Omex were mostly, um, was most likely a black civilization of African origin has not been made public. And the Indian, and the Indian element in Mexico has gained more prominence to the extent of the Negroid um, of the ancient Mexican and Mesoamerican civilization has been kept secret. And this is true. My wife and I went to... Um, Mexico some years ago, and we asked the uh, we asked the tour guide about the old Mexico. He kept talking about the Mayans this, the Mayans that, and when we asked about the uh, Olmex, he said, "Well, they're the mothers. Um, they're the mothers of civilization in the um, in the Western Hemisphere. However, we don't know too much about them." And he, then he went to um, next question. So, when they are pressured, they will answer you, but it's very short. And they don't know. But we went around Mexico for um, Cancun, Mexico. We went around looking for the Omecans, for the descendants of the Omex, and we found them. And they look just like us. All right, so that's something in which that we have to analyze and definitely um, have to 
get some um, knowledge on, all right? But it goes into that the Omecs are linked to the Africans in the western part of Africa. In fact, the Mandingos or the Mandinka, all right, which is um, actually the Mandi group of people, all right, such as the um, Songhai, um, the Fula, and the um, Hausa, all right? They're all related, but the Songhai is the one that we want to definitely deal with because they're also the descendants of the Mali Empire. You have the Songhai Empire and you have the Mali Empire, which rose to power under the rule of the great Mandinka king, um, Sandayat um, Kiti, the Kita. All right? And it says that the Mingos in turn belong to Western, uh, West Africa's largest um, ethno linguistic group, the Mandi which actually accounted for more than over 20 million people, all right? Now, it was originally from Mali, all right? Now, the Mandinka gained their independence from um, previous empires in the um, 13th century and found that an empire was stretched across West Africa. They migrated west from the Niger River in search of better um, land, as well as also opportunities for conquest as far as, um, you know, of settling of other territory, not in conquest as far as, as in um, invasion, all right? But um, during that time period, uh, we see various establishments of something great, which is known as the um, Timbuktu, all right? Um, we'll get into that in a second. But what is said that during the 16th, 17th, and 18th century, Century, many um, as a third of the Mandinka population was enslaved and shipped to America through capture and conflict, and therefore a significant portion of the African Americans in the United States are descended from the Mandinka people. Now, we know that's about 15%. The other 85% were already here, but these are talking about impacts over and over that 600 million year span or more of our people coming in contact over and over again with each other, even after the continental drift of two million years ago. Now, if you get the United Nations definition of indigenous people, it states in the Inter-American Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, Article 1 definition, it says in this declaration, indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity with society which existed prior to the conquest and the settlement of their territories by Europeans. Two, as well as people brought involuntarily to the new world who freed themselves and reestablished the culture from which they have been torn. Right? So those are the two specific ones that you want to deal with. The people who was already here as well as also those who were brought here 400 to 500 years ago um, through the um, Middle Passage, or what is also referred to as um, the Cross the Waters as they came or was brought as POWs or slash um, later on so-called slaves. Of course, we know that the word slave comes from the word um, Yugoslavia or Slavic. All right, so they actually was never that. They was always POWs, prisoners of war, as we already um, stated, that they was captured in conflicts. And portion of this conflict can be seen um, on the movie Roots, and that's the portion of which that Alex Haley dealt with, even though he knew it was much deeper than that. But as a 33rd degree Mason, he had to hide portions of it and just rebuild that portion because he never wanted to speak about the other 80 or 5% of the people who was already here um, prior to the settlement of their territories by the Europeans. All right? So, we're going to continue on with this because I'm basically showing you how we are the same family. All right? And there's people right now who's trying to split the family up and state that um, we're not Africans, you know, in that regard. All right, if you take all the land masses and converge it upon Africa, Africa still sits at the center. All right, it is still the hub of um, man, 
because we got other information coming from another book they refer to as Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremore, The Hidden History of the Human of the Human Race, in which that he speaks about the fact that two point eight billion years ago, um there was metallic spears. And these metallic or uh, metal like spears uh, which sounds, and it was blasted out of particular rocks out of South Africa. So that showed that even 2.8 billion years, billion, not million, billion years ago, we were smelting metals. And as a matter of fact, even goes on to say that this particular metal, um, they do not have an earthly existence for at this particular time period. Now, I'm not saying you know, that it was necessarily, you know, um, you know, UFOs or, you know, or aliens in which that came down. Of course, we do have those particular sciences lodged within the um, storytelling and traditions of various uh, various Africans. One in particular is the Dogon, in which that is related to the Omex, as a matter of fact, in which that the Omex we are related to ourselves. So we are actually, the Dogons were actually the ancient Egyptians that was there in Egypt dating back 8,000 years ago. And they left in order to travel into Mali. And as you know, the Mandis or the Mandinkas or the Mandingos um, came from out of the Malian um, area. So actually they was one and the same people. All right, they was related to each other. Now, of course, we know that that particular um, society deals with the um, star um, sir, um, system of Sirius and the Orions and so on. All right? Um, we get into particular um, similarities between as far as the language. You have Clyde Winters, in which that shows that the Wolof um, language of, of um, the Senegalese dialect um, expanded um, into portion of the Omex, but what is not known and what is also referred to as um, prior to that, the another language in which that was part of it was the Akan, all right, or the Ethan system, in which that um, in the Akan um, you also have what's called Shri. Shri is actually over ninety percent um, of the Metunetu. So when people want to go back and study the Metu Netu, when you study Shri um, and the pronunciation of the Shri um, language, you will find that it is nearly identical to the Metu Netu, all right? So this means that they've been dealing with the same ancient Egyptian mysteries as far as also the languages, the Dogon, the Omex, and many other African tribes, all right? And this can be verified through other scholars. You know, because we have individuals who are saying that the metronet has never been translated, and that is not true. There's still people today in Africa who speak um, the metronet language between 60 to 90, some odd percent. All right, matter of fact, even Hebrew and Arabic, Aramaic, Amharic, all of that is actually part of the metronet, or part of the mother tongue in which that is over 68% are related to the Metsumetra. This is why a lot of the keys within these various languages and tongues, are, um, such as Hebrew and Arabic in particular, um, has still so much power in it is because it is still part of that particular um, science. All right, but um, one of the ones in which that dealt greatly with this information is Mansa Musa, all right, which translated actually Kings of Kings or the Emperor, and he was the um, king of the Malian Empire. Now, for those who don't know anything about Mansa Musa, um, it is said that he put 200 ships into the waters in which that um, sailed over here, and those ships were never found again. And that was here to the Americas, all right, because it's the tale of them going to be with their brothers. So they knew their brothers was already here, referred to as the Omex or the Sheep people, 
of the Omecas, all right, as they refer to as, which means rubber people, but uh, we'll go with the she um, people because that is actually what they refer to as she. All right, now, we're speaking about Timbuktu, we're speaking about the Songhai, Malian Empire. Well, and of course, because Master Musa is also the one who um, traveled through the cities of Timbuktu, um, you know, and actually um, we set that up, you know, he bought, um, uh, you know, Timbuktu soon became a trade, you know, of um, trade, you know, sense of trade um, culture. Islam, um, markets brought into uh, merchants from Nigeria, Egypt, and other African kingdoms. Um, a university was founded in the city, um, as well as in um, the Malian cities of um, Jani and Songo. Um, Islam was spread through the markets and the university, making Timbuktu a new area for Islamic scholarship. Now, this is not the Islam on which that you are thinking. This is more so Sufism or the mystic side, you know, dealing with the science. All right, more science as we refer to it is um, nowadays, which is actually the ancient teachings of, of mysteries of Egypt called the Hakat or um, the Herbach teachings. All right, so news of this um, empire, which is, you know, the city of wealth, um, even traveled across the Mediterranean to southern Europe where traders from Venice, Granada, uh, you know, all of them came because we remember these are more. You know, that ruled Europe for 800 years, from 711 to um, AD until 1492. Now, the University of um, Sankari, all right, um, in Timbuktu, was restaffed under um, Master Musa's reign with jurists, uh, which are, you know, what we refer to now as lawyers, astronomers, uh, mathematicians. You know, the university became a center of learning and culture, you know, drawing Muslim scholars from from around Africa and the misnomer uh, Middle East. You know, of course, you know, the Middle East came about through the Berlin Conference, you know, to Timbuktu. Now, the interesting thing is that the Songkhai Malian Empire encompassed the territory now known as Morocco. So when the Moors refer to this as al Morocco, they are correct, or Morocco, or uh, Maruka. All right, now, I'm going to get into that, and you're going to see what we're talking about. But before we get into that, um, let's get into um, the word America. If you go to Webster Universal Dictionary, 1937, America was defined as an aboriginal or one of various copper color natives from, uh, found on the American continent, not the United States, on the American continent by the descent of European scholars. Because America was named America or al Morocco or al Morocco prior to the Europeans coming here. All right? And this is shown by the nickname which that was given to um, Americo Vanspusky, whose real name is actually Alberto Vanspusky. But because he came into America and he met with the natives, um, on the indigenous people, he found that the name of this particular land was called America, or Americo, or Amorak. All right, so it says in the definition that the following is the original application of the name Maru. Now, the word M-E-R-U, Maru, is same as M O O R or M U U R or A M E R U and Ka, you know, which becomes America. So it shows you in this science um, the connection between how this was Maru or America or America, all right, which is Al Morocco. Now, if you don't believe me, let's continue on. Go to Black's Law Dictionary, Deluxe, fourth edition, and look up Amorality. It says it is properly the successor of the consular courts, which was emphatically the court of merchants and seagoing persons, establishing the principal maritime cities on the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. Now, the deluxe fourth edition was copywritten in 1957 by um, West Publishing Company. So what is this Western, so what is this fall of Western Empire that um, this fourth edition on um, um, Black Snow um, dictionary Deluxe Fourth Edition is referring to in Admiralty. They say that revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. In 1957, the United States was still going. Even though as much of a corporation that it is, it still is going. They don't refer to this as the fall of the Western Empire. So what fall are they referring to? 
Well, you can get some clarity when you go to um, Black's Law Dictionary 6th edition and you go to Consular Court. See, this is the reason why they split this up. It's so that you won't go and do your research because you only have one source. But if you have several sources, then you can put this information together. And it goes on to say that court held by the consulars of one country within the territory of another under authority given by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. And in some instances, they have also a criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect was given to review by the courts of the home government, the last of the United States consular courts. In parentheses, Morocco was abolished in 1956, and that was by Dwight, um, President Dwight um, um, Eisenhower. All right, and that was by um, President Dwight Eisenhower. Now, it says that courts held by the consulars of one country within the territory of another. Now, remember, the United States is a corporation, and the United States is of America. America is not of the United States. So, once again, that means that one has supreme authority. And it says, under authority given by treaty. What treaty do this authority emerge from? Is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco. President Barack Obama would tell you that Morocco was the first country in order to recognize the United States, you know, as a said government, as effective as it is. All right? The United States Corporation emerged from out of the Virginia Company, in which that petitioned um, the various states in order to have access to the waterways, in order for trade. And that was temporary. That was the last, that was actually a, um, a particular land grant in which that was given to them and which that expired in 2004. You get the book, um, Exhuming of a Nation, um, excuse me, Exhuming of, um, of a Nation, um, the autobiography of Prophet Abu Drali by um, Elahu Pleasant Bay. All right, so what are the treaties in which they refer to? Once again, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, which is the Treaty of Marrakesh, and the Barbary Treaty. These are the treaties in which that is talking about. And treaties, just like the United States Constitution, the supreme law of the land. But yet, Dwight Eisenhower, you know, abolished the Morocco courts in 1956. And it says it was the last United States Consular Courts, Morocco, in parentheses, was abolished in 1956. Now, if you go to Title 22, United States Code 141 to 143, it was, it was repealed. And it says, Act of August 1st, 1956, repealed Section 144 to 143, effective with, um, upon the date which the President determined to be appropriate for the relinquishment of jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco's jurisdiction. Once again, for the relinquishment of jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco's jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco, All right? This is what they are saying. Was relinquished by mandate of memorandum of President Dwight Eisenhower, dated September fifteenth, nineteen fifty-six. Notice was given to Morocco on October the sixth, nineteen fifty-six, and all pending cases were disposed of by nineteen sixty. See Bulletin of the State Department, Volume 35, 909, page 844. And it goes on in Section 144, R.S., Section 4083, 4125, 4126, 4127, Act, June 14, 1878. All right, Chapter 193, 20 Statute 131, relates to judicial authority generally of of ministers and consulars of the United States in China, Siam, Turkey, Morocco, Muscat, Abyssinia, which is Ethiopia, Persia, and territories formerly part of the Ultima Empire, including Egypt. The Ultima Empire. So you have 
Morocco, Songhai Empire, the Malian Empire, the Ultima Empire. This is all nothing more than saying the Olmec Empire. They keep changing the names in order to throw you off the track. In order for you to keep having to research all these particular different areas when it's actually the same people. And this is done purposely. This is done purposely. In order to keep you off the track. All right? So, when we're talking about these particular sciences, we got to realize that this information has been hidden. And it's been hidden pretty well. Even within what I just finished reading, it makes it appear as if um, the United States was in these particular areas or territories. When actually, these particular um, territories within the United States. They switched it up. So, let's get back to some more information here. When you're dealing with Clyde Winters, um, Dr. Clyde Winters, he um, did some studies in which that he, um, you know, researches such as Ivan Bar Sonoma, they came before Columbus, um, Renoko Rashidi, and others. Um, Alexander um, Von Wooten has presented evidence that clearly shows that the Omex were not Indians. All right? They were Africans, no different from Africans found in the Mandy um, region of West Africa. Studies done by Clyde Winters shows that the Omex used the Mandy script, a writing system um, used amongst the Mandinkas and other Africans in West Africa. When the writings on the Omec monuments was translated, it was found that the language spoken by the Omex was Mandi. Now, once again, the Mandis are related lineage-wise to the Dogon. The Dogon left Egypt 8,000 years ago, or 6,000 B.C., and they were the high priests of the orders of astronomers and astrologers. That's who they were. They were the, um, they were the ones in which that soon developed what is known as the Zoroastrian religion. All right? If you ever go and study um, um, Zoroastra um, or the Zoroastrian religion, which dealt with astrology and astronomer, um, astrology and astronomer, you know, um, that, that particular science of studying of the stars, of cosmology, that branch came from out of the Dogon. The Dogon were the high priests of those particular orders, and they were the ones who was known for tracking and mapping of the Sirius star system. And the reason why Sirius was the one in which that they focused on, um, in particular, was because um, Sirius... A and Series B went around each other every 50 years and exchanged tremendous amounts of energy between the two to the point the energy was so strong that they flip-flopped on each other. Well, this correlates to the Old Testament, which speaks about the 50-year uh, jubilee. Every 50 years, there was a jubilee festival for a whole year in which that the Israelites or Hebrews um, would do nothing, you know, um, as far as planting, and they would celebrate the whole year. That's the science in which that, that celebration was based on was actually the Star Constellation Series every 50 years of that transition between Series A and Series B. Now, they found that the same iron ore that is um, in Series B actually is in the human body. And the reason for that is quite simple because Series B imploded on itself in which that formed um, the release of that energy formed our sun into existence in which that our sun formed the planets into existence. Hence, the Earth is one of those planets, and hence, we are Earthlings. So hence, we have the same iron ore as that which has already been um, um, calculated as being that of the same as Sirius B. So this is what all of this um, science is. Now, the Omex, they studied the Venus complex in astronomy. 
they dealt with Star Venus. And this is also one of the reasons why the Moors have um, the five-pointed green star on their flag in which that they would tell you symbolizes Venus. All right, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And most of them don't even, do not even know that that is part of the Omec culture and the reason why that particular um, star is on that um, flag. And the reason why the Omecs um, came from the Mali and Songhai Empire, which that encompassed Morocco. And that connection between the kingdom of Morocco and the empire of Morocco, uh, al Morocco, or uh, America, known as the Songhai Malian Empire, known as the Ottoman Empire, known as the Washington D. Doug, the Manya Empire. All of this is the same empire. There's various names used over time in order to hide our information and to hide the fact that we actually are the landowners and the original inhabitants of North, Central, and South and the adjoining islands, you know, referred to as the Americas and America, or Americana. All right, so this is what Dr. Leo Wiener found, is that those were the connections. Now, some would have us to believe <clears throat> that the Omecs were, um, that the Omecs were, quote, unquote, um, blood letters, or they performed human sacrifices in which that no evidence had to that. They did have blood letting tools. But just like in the Old Testament, um, that could have easily been utilized on animals. But they wanted us to think that they was cannibalistic, uncivilized, but yet had the, one of the, um, the most flourishing empires from Peru all the way into the Alaska. That's why you were found pyramids and mounds throughout those territories from South America into Central and the United States, Canada, North American region. Now, the Omex, they had a religious practice of thunder worship, all right, in which that, of course, we know who's the thunder god within um, Niger or Nigeria is Shango. So hence, they became known as the Shang Dynasty, as we um, have put this out before. You have the same people of the Omex, the Shi people who actually went uh, from out of the interior of Africa, they also went not just westward, they, they also went eastward. And they found the um, first dynasty of Asia or China known as the Shang dynasty. The word Shang is called S-H-A-N-G, which is, you add the O, which is Shango. All right? The Jishango, all right? So in, so in West Africa, the axe is also a predominant um, feature in connection with Shango or the Dunder God um, said worship. Of course, you know that this is African religion. Um, Shango symbolizes, um, in a sense, the solar plexus, all right, or Heru. All right? That's why you have the Xi'an um, providence where the pyramids are located at in China. The Xi'an people are the Omex. Right? The word Xi'an is also short for Shang, as in Shango. Right? So they also had the science of when they were seeing the Americans as the Jaguar, all right? or what is known as Ish Balam. Ish Balam. Now, the jaguar, if you go to Africa, you would see um, the leopard skin worn by the ancient Egyptians as that of part of the priesthood. Well, the Omex used the, um, used the, the cats here in the Americas in order to signify that. In particular, um, they used um, the jaguar. Now, the black panther and the jaguar are related. All right? And if you ever seen a, um, a jaguar, a black um, panther, before it transformed into completely all black, it actually have um, spots just like a, um, 
a leopard or slash a, um, you know, or just like a leopard, as we were saying. So we're, we're talking about utilizing the same ancient mystery school system, even here in North America. And you can see how it was um, brought about. If the Dogon were in Egypt 8,000 B.C., or 8,000 years ago, excuse me, which is 6,000 B.C., that means that they helped the Twa people, who are known as the Twa people, or misnomer the Pata people, or Pataites, also referred to or misnomer the Pygmies. Um, they helped them build the pyramids and as well as also those various temples. So that same information as far as um, being able to um, chart the skies was also used for charting um, these particular structures on Earth. Because remember, they were bringing heaven to Earth. That's the reason why they did those, that's why they did those particular calculations, was to bring heaven to Earth. We have already know, um, we have already gone through the science of um, in, the, in the serious mysteries, the serious connection by um, Murray and Hope, serious mysteries by Robert Temple, in which that states that um, um, the Orion constellation, the three stars in the Orion constellation, actually is set up just like the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau, which is actually based just like on the three glands in your brain. You know, your pineal, hypothalamus, and pituitary gland. It's all in the same alignment as the three pyramids on the Giza Plateau and three stars in Orion's belt. So they was bringing heaven to Earth. So these were the astro- um, astronomers, or astrologers, or cos- cosmologists who was utilizing these particular sciences in order to make this take place, bringing heaven to Earth. You know, of course, you know, for the Christians, this, I mean, that's right there in your Lord's you no know, prayer. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's right there. All right? So don't act like it's foreign to you because it's not. Now, when we go to the Omex, according to this article <clears throat> written by Paul Burton, he states that the Omex carved about 22 Colossus stone heads. This is at least the heads in which they've been found so far in the southern part of Mexico. And that their influences are found in Guatemala and further south. Now, the Omex type sculptures, um, sculpt, um, sculptures have also been found in parts of the United States. All right? Now, if you go to um, the Washington Nation of Louisiana, um, the emperor speaks about, they have spoken about this years ago, where another prehistoric black nation who still has members and land today exists. All right? That's why you got to check into the Washington because they are direct descendants of the Omax. All right? Hence, direct descendants of the Dogon. Hence, direct descendants of the ancient Egyptians. This is the reason why the word Washington is utilized because it comes from the word Ushita. Or Wajeta, in which that symbolizes the sun just with the wings, in which that means supreme enlightenment. You got to get your studies on. So the Omex and the Washita, the black Californians, the Yamases, and other pre Columbian blacks of the Americas were part of a prehistoric trade network that began in Africa and spread it uh, worldwide over 100,000 years ago. And after various periods afterwards, all right, now, according to the book, Susan Economics, the, um, the History of Pan-African Trade, Commerce, Money, and Wealth, these blacks, all right, these said blacks, Moors, found in the Americas, as well as remnants of their ancient civilizations, are not a myth or fairy tale. It goes on to say that the ancient blacks of the Americas are the missing pieces of a large puzzle that would be solved if many of today's writers, scientists, historians, and um Archaeology and anthropology were not so biased or embarrassed, like the Mexican um, archaeologists who found out, without a doubt, that the Omex of Mexico were black, African, and that they introduced the first um, calendar to Mexico around or about 3,113 years before the Christian era. All right, so this is what they're dealing with, you know, is the embarrassment. Of them having to say, 
or yeah, everything that we have, um, as far as have dug, you know, has been mostly of you and which that dates back to the oldest. But they've already leaked that out. Richard Leakey leaked that out. Louis Leakey leaked that out back in the 1950s that the oldest people on the face of the planet are said the black people. All right? But they don't want to capitalize on that because then in that process that would give us pride, self-esteem, self-worth, self-love, and you might take this thing over again with that type of um, impression and influence. But not only is there an ancient black um, African presence or contribution to the creation of civilization and um, culture in the prehistoric or ancient Americas, but there is also is such a presence and contribution in Mesopotamia, as you know, because Nimrod was a son of Cush. All right? So that goes into Arabia, India, Cambodia, southern China, as we just finished talking about the Olmecs going there and, and uh, forming the Shang Dynasty, as well as the Shang Li Dynasty. And the word Li within Chinese means black or dark skin or com- dark complexity, hence Jet Li, Bruce Lee, etc. And also the origin of martial arts or the Mantu or Mintu um, arts coming from out of the interior of um, the Kushite Empire into um, the ancient Egyptian Empire. One in the same, actually. So the Omex is related to the so-called black Washington of Louisiana, which has been actually documented by the French and Spanish to be one of the um, so-called black nations which existed in the Mississippi Valley and the southern Midwestern United States uh, before the Louisiana so-called purchase, which actually was never purchased of um, 1803 um, to um, 1805, in which that supposedly France sold their lands without their consent. Now, the reason why I say it supposedly is because um, the only thing in which that supposedly been actually sold was a few b- military barracks and two streets in New Orleans, all right, Louisiana. But the rest of Louisiana, as well as also on up into the rest of the 13 particular states that's part of the Louisiana Purchase all the way up into the, um, the whole of Canada, never was purchased. So um, this is absolutely a lie. And Thomas Jefferson actually gave forth his sentiments at the time about this lie, you know, because Napoleon never got paid, all right? $15 million in gold was supposed to went to Napoleon, and almost $4 million of it sunk beneath the ocean floor off the coast of Florida. So that means full payment was never rendered, so therefore service cannot be rendered, hence it was terminated. That's even for the two streets and a few military barracks on which that's supposed to have been bought um, in Louisiana from the United States, from France. So that's never even happened. And you get a book, is on um, the history of the African Omex. Um, it details the feelings of the descendants of the of so-called said black Washington nation who still live in the southern United States to this very day. As a matter of fact, you can get the Empress's book, Empress, where the Afi gets on Turner L. Bay, in which that her book is called The Return of the Ancient Ones. Now, in retrospect, there's another book is called The History of the um, Ancient Omex. Black Civilization of America is from the prehistoric times of the present era, and it's a treasure to behold. Anyone who's confused about the history of the United States and the entire Americas before Columbus should read this um, book. All right? Um, there's another book um, written. Um, oh, man, there's so many books. I'll be here all day. But we're going to get a lot of these books um, going here. All right, we got the Echo of the Old Dark Land by Charles um, by Charles Finch, all right? Um, the Ancient Origin of the Major World uh, Western Religion um, by Dr. Ben. You can get these books in order to help correlate as far as the um, sciences. You got the African presence, um, as we said, in, um, in um, Ancient America, uh, written by um, Agar von Sertima. You have the um, the missing pages written by Indo Kush, and what they never told you in history class by Indo Kush. 
You have the Sex and Race Volume 1 by um, Jay Rogers. All right. So these are um, books and ones that you definitely have to get into in order to definitely find out about what's really going on. All right. Um, before we get into the um, questions, we got an announcement in order to make about the United Watch Tour um, more cruise, in which that will be going on 2013, March 21st through 25th. Right? You got to beat it. All right? If you think that this is good information, you haven't heard nothing yet. You haven't seen it yet. All right? It is nothing more live than a live lecture going to the pyramids. You're going to be going to Cozumel, to the pyramids in Mexico. So not only will you learn this history, you will actually see it. All right? That's something great. All right? I know some of you might have been saving up your money to go to Egypt. But we know what's going on, and they're still trying to get everything settled over there. But you can definitely go um, to Mexico and check out your um, pyramids and the mounds, um, you know, that has actually been built by your, I guess, in a sense, your ancestors, you know, as we would say, um, the Omex, or the Xi people. And so, you know, come on out and check it out. You can um, actually um, call um, Sister Alicia at 770-485-8065. That's 770-485-8065. And um, you can call and also to set up um, payments. Um, there's a payment scale or, um, in which that you can actually check out. And right now is $100. So come on, you know, come on and join. Check it out. You're going to see something real spectacular, we promise. All right, so now we're going to go to the phone lines, and we're going to hit them up. Let's see some questions here. We get area code 773. Area code 773, you're on the line. Peace. Peace, bro. Peace. How you doing, huh? Peace, I'm just listening, man. Okay, you just listening? All okay. right. Yeah, yeah. I see you, you, got the, you got the baby listening too. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. That's just okay. listening, man. Okay. No doubt. This is this, this Amir Nassim Bay, All right. Chicago. All right. Side time in the house. Hey, All right, peace. Peace. All right, get every code 314. Every code 314, you on the line. Uh, peace. Uh, Please, brother, 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 I mean, when you really get into it, you know, and as far as um, Mexico, you have to find a tour guide in which that is real honest about it. Like you said, when we went to Mexico, um, the tour guide said, um, when we brought up the Omex, because he kept saying Mayan, well, what about the Omex? Oh, well, they're the mothers of civilization, but we don't know too much about them. Next question. So this is the way that they like to deal with it. You know, and so the Mexicans that. themselves don't really like the idea that uh, really the ancient Omex were the original indigenous people of that of of, of uh, the Americas. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Right. But uh, yet, what, the word Mexi means mix. So okay. what they mix with? They mix with Spaniard and what? So called black mm. Omex. I like to know where, where did the Mexicans actually derive from? The people themselves. Um, between the um, mixture of the Spaniards and the Omex. Okay. Okay. Because I know they had a kind of had a migrate wall come down from somewhere. They had to right. start well, from somewhere. Right. If you get into the Mayan, the Aztec, the Incas, the Toltec, um, the various um, tribes or civilizations during that time period, you would see invasions coming from Spain. Mm-hmm. Right. What people don't realize is that during that time period, um, the Moors, you know what I'm saying, 
just left Spain in 1492. So that answers a lot of that also, why right. the, so, the Mexicans are so dark. Right, right. Well, you haven't seen the Mexicans until you actually go to Mexico and you actually go to the mall. That's where you had to find the Omex set, was at the mall, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's where we found them at, and they look just like us. Matter of fact, I was walking down the street and I seen one um, sister. She was so dark. I was like, I was like, damn. <coughs> I seen some you know, very dark Mexicans in California. Yeah, yeah. Dark as I, dark as I was. Right. You know, and I'm like, man, wow. You know. Right. But exactly. they get mad and real angry at you if you if you try to tell them that they try to or uh, uh, try to identify themselves with us, you know. Well, you have to start out with the Omex in order to help them realize what they're talking about, because they they still know something about the Omex. All right, they still get something taught within their own history about the Omex, so um, it's still there. So you have to start out with the Omex. You can't start with the American black. You know, said black thing, try to link them to us. You have to start with the Omex, and then how they came from out of Mexico into the interior of, of um, the Mississippi. All right. Which that Prophet Noble Dali already told us that uh, before the Europeans came, there was more living all up and down the Mississippi Valley. Right, right. So it was the Omex or the Washita. Right. It was spread throughout the southern region, on up into the north um, eastern region all across the Great Lake region and all up and down, the, um, all up in, um, in California and all mm-hmm. up. So, you know, these was all, you know, quote, unquote, um, our people. So we got territories stretching all the way from there through even Canada. Uh, right, all the way even up, right, all the way even up into Canada. That was the Louisiana so-called purchase. If you ever get a map, you would, see, you would count about 13 states. Um, in which that it was consisted of, even actually it was more than that, uh, but it was actually almost the whole of, of um, Canada. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. So, yeah, so uh, I was uh, also thinking about the islands, you know, uh, as far as uh, Jamaica, right. Uh, right. The, the Honduras, not the Honduras, but uh, uh, that's, the <coughs> excuse me, uh, Jamaica, uh, Haiti, right? Uh, the rest of those islands. I'm sure mm-hmm. that I, I was just wondering were they also indigenous of those islands as well? Because a lot of them said yes. they had, some escaped slaves, they escaped to those islands, and so forth. You know, right? Well, you did. have the maroons, right? You have the maroons from out of um, Jamaica, in which that um, or more, um, in which that the word maroon means runaways, in which that was uh, related to the Seminole from out of Florida. Okay. Um, and they was one of the same people. As a matter of fact, um, um, the, um, the Seminole was also referred to as the Maroons, even right here in the United States. All right. So you also had the Arawak, in which that um, produced what is known as the Tayano, or uh-huh. you know who we refer to as the Puerto Ricans now, because there's no such thing as Port Rich, you know, as a people. I mean, their support, you know, where ships came and docked. That's not a people. So there's no such thing as Puerto Ricans. They're Tayano and Arawak. Arawak okay. were the original um, um, people there. And that's like the Arawak was actually partial, um, um, partly mixed with the Cherokee. Okay, so you're saying what the uh, the so-called Puerto Ricans, they are Tayano? Right, Tayano. Tayano. Right, T-A-I-N-O, Tayano. Okay, because I, I I thought they were because some people said they were Barinquins or something. Right, but that still is um, not the oldest source of who they are. The oldest okay. source is actually Tayano. Tayano, okay. Right, or Arawak. Or Arawak. And the Arawak people, right? The Arawak people is also the people who um, Haiti and um, the Dominic Republic. Okay. They were Arawak also, and then you also had the Caribbean um, people. Okay. Right. So, so uh, um, did, mm-hmm, go ahead. What what they was uh, I was also thinking about the uh, so-called Native American, uh, what they call so-called Indians, they call them uh, Mohawks, 
And I always, to me, I always thought ben, maybe they could have been related to Moorhawk. Right. So well, that, I'm talking about the Moorhawks. Right. The Moorhawks. Right. Well, actually, if you go and get on the Moorhawk Conference, it's called the Mohawk Conference, but they were talking about black people in it. So they are one and the same. The Moors and the Mohawks were actually one and the same. Okay. Okay. As well as also the Mohicans, as well as also um, the Muskogee, which is called the Creek, the Seminole, the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, which is the Washita, as well as also the Cherokee, the Osage, the Seneca, as well as also the Comanche. We all had treaties together because we was the so-called, um, quote-unquote, said black tribes of the Americans, uh-huh. the Native Americans, the, um, the Moors, in which that, out of that came forth the so-called five civilized tribes. That so it, what more? Go, it, that's why if you go to any powwow to, um, to this day, you can mm-hmm. see nothing more than black people, especially here in the South. If you um, go um, here in the South, um, you know, or up along the East Coast or through the Great Lake area, um, area or region, and they have their powwows, um, so-called Indians or Native American powwows, you can see us. We're leading the powwows. We're the chiefs. We're the, um, um, we're the ones who are doing the dances. You can see us. Okay. Yeah, I, I was uh, also um, thinking about, um, uh, uh, yeah, one brother on a DVD, he was saying about the talk, talking about the different tribes, the Ish, uh, Ish, uh, Ishmael Moors, Ben Ishmael Moors, and uh, he was, right. then he was talking about you also have the Washita, but right. uh, what I think where he was uh, made a correct, I uh, made an error at that they all were derivatives or tribes of the Washita Nation. Am, am I correct no, or he, wrong? No, he is absolutely correct. They all um, derive of the Washington Nation or the Empire of Washington. That's what, I'm, that's not, that's what I'm saying. Right, but he, right. He named well, the Washington right. last. Right. No, 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 no. Um, um, I think that was just probably a, um, a, um, a slip of the tongue, fortunate slip. But um, if you go and get um, the Camp Holmes Treaty, H-O-L-M-E-S, Camp Holmes Treaty, mm-hmm. you will see in there – that when we all came together under treaty, it was known as the Wichita Nations. Okay, yeah. It was known as the Wichita and Washita Nation. And that was the same Comanche. thing. Right. It was the, the, the Comanche, the Cherokee, Choctaw Creek, which is the Muscogee, the Seneca, the Osage, um, the Chickasaw, all of us were together in treaty. Right. Then we had some who sold us out. In particular, was the Seneca. They sold us out. <laughs> Typical. You know. Yeah, that was, so that is actually what took place. And how I know this is because um, we had a brother who got exiled from here, from the United States, and we gave him paperwork, and he was able to get across the border. But as he was at the border in Canada. Um, a Seneca Indian asked him because he was talking to the uh, so-called police, you know, or the, um, you know, the uh, patrol, you know, border patrol. Mm-hmm. And he asked him, you know, what tribe he belongs to. And he said, Washita. And the, native, and the um, Seneca Indian heard him say that. And he asked him, he said, what tribe do you say you belong to? And he told him, Washita. And then Seneca just looked at him and said, just don't kill us. Hmm. Now, what the hell that meant? Yeah, what did it that mean? That, that, that once we do our research, that we go and study the Camp Holmes Treaty, that somebody sold this out. Okay. Because if we were known as the Washington Nation during that time period, what the hell happened? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so he was saying, please don't kill us. So he knew they that uh, because, the, the, because the they guy that over... Uh-huh. So they betrayed no, them. Sell out. Right. That's where they got them damn casinos and shit. The casinos? Yeah. Okay, what, what what about the casinos? They got them. Oh, okay. They ain't got them. You talking about uh, the casinos in Vegas? No, I'm talking about the, casi- um, the casinos in Canada. 
Oh, the casino's in Canada. Okay. I got kind of yeah, confused. That's where, Cinecolo, that's, the, that's where the Cineco located at. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. I got you. That's what they said. So was, they get, uh, right, so how they got that? Hmm. Huh. So when he, when he said what, tra- what tribe he belonged to, he kind of gave himself away. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Hmm, okay. Like I said, if I go to Canada and say I was a member of the Washita Nation, what would they say? It depends on which Indian tribe you're talking to. Okay. If it's the Seneca, then they know the history of what we're talking about. Because this guy, because they asked him what tribe he belonged to, and he said the Washita. And so the guy said, "What you so say?" They know, they know what's, they know what's going on out. Okay. I mean, we haven't gone to the United Nations for nothing. It's been recognized as the oldest indigenous people on the face of the planet, you know. And we so, was in, um, um, in 1993, um, the Empress was given a seat number 215, which is part of the Economic and Social um, um, Council at the United Nations. Yeah, I have those numbers on my cards, on my ID cards and papers. Right. right. The two fifteen. So, now the number. The, what, uh, do that. Uh, do that give me a. Uh, that tells me who I am, right? Well, that distinguishes you from uh, from being a Negro, black and colored, in a sense, and you're being identified as a Washington Moor. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. And it's not a distinction as far as in color; it's a distinction as far as in status. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. And that you've been classified within that Title 22 of what we were just talking about, 141, as being actually a diplomat or, part, or um, as a consula up under that particular um, part of the treaties, or the Treaty of um, Marrakesh, the Treaty of um, um, all of these particular treaties that we may mention now, as well as also the Treaty of Camp Holmes and many others. It actually gives over um, 300 and some odd treaties in which that we had, in which that. The United States broke. Okay. So they had broken many so treaties with different it, tribes. Right. In hmm. particular, the one that you want to check out is the Camp Holmes Treaty. The what, the what treaty? Camp Holmes. Camp Holmes. H-O-L-M-E-S. Camp Holmes. Okay. All right, brother. <coughs> um, L, we're getting ready to get back to more calls here. Appreciate you calling. Okay, boy. Please, more. Peace. Area code 808. Area code 808, you on the air. Hey, what's peace, good? Islamism. Peace. peace. Islam, how's it going? Peace. What's good, man? This is your friend to the end, Imhotep, out here in Seattle. All right, brother Imhotep, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing good, man. You guys, you know, I just kind of hopped in on you guys' conversation, and, you know, I, uh, I had missed you the, the other week, or you was talking with AA, and so I thought it wasn't appropriate to come at you with, with this. But you got you were just it's almost like you were psychic. You were just already going in on what my question was. But um, so me and my boy, he's from uh, and he's from Alabama. You know, what I'm saying he's out here in Washington. So we we're building about similar subjects. You know, what I'm saying he was talking about Choctaw, Alabama, and the Moa right. tribe, right? Right. Okay, so every time he said Moa, I was like, that's more. I was like, right. it, it, you know, and every time he said it, it, I kept hearing, you know, the inside story there. You know what I mean? And it's, exactly. and it's, uh, it's Moa County, and Moa County sits right next to Washington County. And I remember you saying, right. I, I think you, I remember hearing you saying that Wash, George Washington might have had some Choctaw in him. Was that you saying that? Right, that was the um, original one, right, the one in which that was actually Jorge Washington. Um, okay. Um, yeah, right, but okay. of course we know that according to what the Empress taught us, she told us um, specifically that um, Adam Weissa, um killed Jorge in which that he became president, you know, um, and that's actually him in which that actually um, set this thing up under the Constitution for the United States of America, who was also the founder of the Bavarian Illuminati. Okay, so and you, and you, you know, get and you can get disinformation from a book called Cosmic Trigger. Okay, okay, Cosmic Trigger. Yeah, check that let book out. Me, let me go. 
let me go in. Let me go in a little more to the to the question because the question is it's not really a question. It's more of a, a, a uncovering. So as I looked into all of all of this, you know, saying Choctaw, and I know that I have some Cherokee and we have some Blackfoot in our family, and I, and I imagine we have Choctaw also, just not being out of Mississippi. But as I as I got to discovering, there is we made a treaty with Confederate. Right, and then I remember Noble Drew Ali talking about he could just walk into those Confederate types, the Ku Klux Klan types, with no problem. To the, am I right? Am I am I going right down the right path? Go ahead, keep going. Okay, so because you know I was then I you know and then and then this 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 actual um, treaty had a seal and it said the Great Seal, and then I said okay, there's already another Great Seal, so and this other Great Seal has symbols that have nothing to do with anybody who's European or you know, Albion or anybody, you know, saying from that area, you know, saying, because these, these are symbols that have to do with where Moors or, you know, natives would come from. And, you know, saying, I was, and I was going, okay, this means that Noble Drew Ali was really telling us something here. You know, saying, because in that, it. yeah, no doubt yeah, about no it. Doubt about I, it. You know, right, right. No, if, if you go and get the book, um, Return of the Ancient Ones, the Empress showed you in detail how, um, Prophet Noble Dali was the fifth prince of the um, Maison Rouge. In other words, he uh, was part of that royal line of the Washington and Turnica, of the Washington and Turnica family, in which that his mother was Eliza Turner and father was John Drew, in which that was part of the landmark case of the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, in which that they won back 68,883 acres of land from out of Louisiana, and that was part of the three million leading up into Canada, which actually was $15 million in total of acres, in which that um, is owed to us, in which that we actually own. So let, let, me, let me go even in further. Okay, so from my uncovering, I, I, I can put Albert Pike, the Washita's, all in the same vicinity and area dealing with each other. Right, Albert yeah. Pike was in that region during that time, right? Yeah, exactly. and he was one of the generals that and set right. up he the treaty right. in Alabama. Right, right. So, so and then, so then I, I, you know, then I had to go breaking down that um, Confederate now, now flag. Now think about it. Now, now think about you know it. That? that would go back. To, hold on, check this out. Now that will also go back to the fact that remember the Prince Hall Masons would tell you that Albert Pike wrote um, some of the rituals for them. Why would right. that be? Right, and and so see and see here's the funny part about it is see because it's like and this is like almost the ultimate psychological war. So we automatically see that Confederate flag and we go, oh no, but that's our flag. No doubt. They're wearing our That's the they're wearing our resurrection. Well, that's the uh-huh. sorry resurrection flag. The colors red, yeah. black, and um, 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 red, white, and blue. Is actually um, um, symbols of the ISIS mysteries, all set mysteries. Yeah. Um, you actually I, I, see um, within ancient Kemet, you actually see a um, um, see those colors throughout um, that particular temple of um, Head Head Rule um, and other temples, in which that shows the red colors of red, white, and blue, and of course the star over top of um, all set or ISIS head, in which that becomes the eastern star inverted, or the five pointed star on our flag, uh, which symbolizes Venus. Um, in that regard, and as we said earlier, that same star um, of Venus is actually on that um, is the green star on the five pointed um, on the on the um, red background, and the five pointed green star is, is our flag of the Moors. You know, so you know all hey, of that know, point. And you know, brother, it um, I'm not an initiate, right? You know, what I'm saying so when I start uncovering things, and you know, my grandfather tells me to be quiet. I know that I have, I you know, say I know where I, you know, because Noble Draw Lee kind of gave me my my um, hints in this mystery, and then when I uncover them, you know, when I'm uncovering this on my own in a sense, you know, saying, but just using his guidelines because he didn't he didn't break any of his oaths, but he he left us such the most beautiful like map that was, you know, what I'm saying, and then you know, what I'm saying now that I'm seeing it, it's like okay, and my boy he couldn't see how I was mapping us being here all the way back to Egypt. I said, but the brother went all the way back to Egypt. 
why would he go back to Egypt? We already confirmed what he did right here is all right and exact, you know, saying it squares up. So maybe Egypt is where once you once you're in this line, you go back to Egypt for the true schooling of life. You know what I'm saying? Because they're trying to prepare no you to be a leader. They're trying to prepare well, I mean, you to be a leader. That should be verified to anyone who reads the Holy Quran Circle 7 in the beginning. So you open up the book that says, Know thyself. Well, that is over top of all but the temples um, in ancient Egypt. Right. You can go right, there right. to this day. You can go there to this day and see those, um, um, see that um, over the temples. So, I and mean, you know, it, I, yeah. I, I, I started seeing another side to this too because I, I thought, like, man, maybe I should have became a Mason because. That is some of our navigation, and we sh- just because that other people have walked down the same road and shit on the path doesn't mean we can't walk down the same road and clean the shit up and and you know keep keep them from shitting on the path anymore. Excuse my language, but you know what I mean. Right, I got you. Yeah, yeah, my, exactly. my bad about the language, but but you know, oh, no, you know, no, say, no, man. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes we look at we look at it, it's it's so crazy how. I want to say I want to take a Christian point of view on this right now, but I'm not a Christian, you know. Saying I I think the whole thing is an illusion, but I want to take a Christian point of view and go. It's crazy how Satan has set us up to look us in. We look in the mirror and go, we're the devil. We're you know all of our culture is bad, so they've set us up to go. Well, we're going to show you you yourself in the mirror, and we're going to make you feel like this is bad. So when you see us using it, you're automatically going to have a, a a a feeling within yourself of I don't like that, and really right. you're saying you don't like yourself, and then that's no hate doubt. for yourself. No doubt. Yeah, no but doubt. you know that's all I wanted to go in, man. You know, you uh, you you uh, you solved the you solved the question, you know, saying about uh, are we because we're Confederates, in a sense we made right. a, we made a we we made a deal with them. And and you know last last situation. So so when I went into that, I was thinking like, so maybe the Confederates had something that was beyond what we thought it was, like slavery and all that. Maybe it was they didn't want to change the way the government was, and they knew that these guys were changing the government over into something closer to what we're doing now. Right. Well, um, you're absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, you can get, um, you go to um, a videotape by Brother Hakeem H.Y. Bay, Brother Hakeem Bay, in which that is called What They Never Told You in History Class. That was one of his videos. And in there, he will show you um, or read about a Nexus magazine, N-E-X-U-S, Nexus magazine, in which is an article in there in which that he read that during the time of the Civil War, prior to the Civil War, blacks ruled the South. Okay. Blacks ruled the South. So you're absolutely correct. If that is, is the um, that Confederate flag come from the Southern region and the blacks ruled the South during the time of the Civil War and prior to it, then you're absolutely correct. That is our flag, which is the Osarian flag. Right, that right. And you see, the it, resurrection. see it in Egypt, right. they just got it turned the other way. You know what I mean? Exactly. You see that ex in Egypt and Malcolm X, you know, saying, you know, saying these dudes are trying to tell us, you know, these guys are rocking the X, and then and then the Confederate white boy drives by with the X flying on his thing, and we think that's the worst thing we ever seen in our life. But really, no he got our symbol on, and he's rolling down the street and empowered himself with it. Right. You know, he don't know what it is, so he don't really have real power about it. Right. He right. Think it's well, you know, I mean. Well, we got great wife teachers out there like you, my brother. So, you know, saying we can't lose. No doubt. Thank you, brother. We're going to go to the next call. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Peace, man. Peace, God. All right. We got area code 347. Area code 347. You're on the line. All right. Peace, man. Peace, God. You're live. All right. Area code 347. Area code 347. You're on the line. Peace. Peace. Peace, all right. If there's some questions that was in the chat room, so let me go there right quick, and we'll come back to the phone line. All right, yeah, Cosmic Trigger definitely was by Robert Anton Wilson. Check that book out. I made mention of it, Cosmic Trigger. Um, Robert Anton Wilson. 
All right. Um, no doubt, um, for the comment to you, um, wrote that um, Techio Juan in Mexico is the city of Tahuti, the temple of the sun and moon and the avenue of the dead. All right. Um, of course, that will correlate to the fact of um, of the ritual in which that the pharaoh does uh, between Waset and Luxor, you know, or, um, or what's called Luxor and um, Karnak. All right, so um, there's there's a um, is like two miles in which that they would walk between these particular temples. All right. Um, which is basically the same as the Temple of Sun and Moon and the Avenue of the Dead on um, ritual uh, from the so-called Omex or Mexicans. Once again, um, we, we have stated this earlier that the Omex are the, um, related to the Dogon and the Dogons are ancient Egyptians. So there is one in the same mystery school in which that we have seen established in the East as well as also in the West. And there's a book called um, Black Confederates. Um, thank you but once again, Brother Kometsky, um by Charles Bar- um, Barrow, all right? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we spoke about that. Even the pyramids in Mexico are laid out, I mean, the belt of Orion, like on the Giza Plateau, no doubt about it. That is true. As well as also in Angkor Wat, right, in Cambodia, hence Cam, and then Bodhi, uh, Ptah, you know. So um, there was um, followers of, um, of the god Ptah, who was um, known as the Netra of the Netra rules. Um, so no doubt about it. Um, so, and um, Angkor Tron, all right, so... Go and research this. I had to get it out there because um, the brother is dropping the information on for y'all back here um, in the chat room, and I got to make sure that y'all get it all on the air. Um, let's go back to the phone lines. Appreciate y'all in the chat. Um, let's go to area code 336. Area code 336. You're on the line. Peace. Peace. What's going on, Lambe? This is uh, Rob. Please, Doc. How you doing? All right, about you. I just have I have a uh, couple questions, man. Uh, I try to find that uh, that book, Return of the uh, Ancient One, and I right. couldn't find it. I could not find it, and I was right. trying to well, see if it. I can. Right, we have it, right. brother. Um, if you want to get it from us, just give us a call at two five two, two five seven, three five eight eight. That's two five two. Two five seven three five eight eight, and we have the um, the whole complete version of the Return of the Ancient Ones. And um, you can want it if you want it. Um, we can send it to you via email, or either uh, we can print it off for you, whichever way it was that you want. Okay, all right. And uh, I have another question. Uh, I had asked this one time before, and I tried to get a little more clarity on it when uh, Valentine was on there, but. Um, but what's about to take place and everything? I, you know, I understand about the the Milky Way, the equator of the Milky Way. We get ready to go to the top side of it. But um, is the stuff that all of them was talking about, you know, the guys doing this, is that stuff about to take a switch, you know, from us rising back up to, you know, basically do our thing again? Yeah, well, that's what all of this is supposed to signify. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so supposedly, you know, we're going, uh, we're in the dark rift in which that we have, um, by getting ready to pass the fourth and go into the fifth dimension on the other side of the photon belt, um, through this galactical alignment in which that is, um, happening now and actually, um, been happening for the last 30 years, um, since, um, actually eight, um, 1987, all right, with the, um, um, harmonic, um, um, conversion. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, then you had in November 2008 another harmonic, um, um, in a sense, conversion. In a sense, then in um, that was the Grand Cross, which that occurred too in 1999, August 11th, 1999, and all of this, you know, all of these particular alignments, you know, is moving to that same um, aspect of um you know, dealing with, you know, what is known as the Omec and Mayan calendar, in which that is going to help us move to what is known as the fifth dimension, you know, which means we will be dealing more with energy yeah. and we will have the accessibility in order to um, develop our golden body, 
or light body, as we refer to as, or what is known as the rainbow body. You know, we'll be able to um, gain access to being able to reach higher advanced states in which that it would take some masters um, 20 years or more in order to accomplish, and we can do it in actually in two years span or less. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I have one more question, man. Um, yeah. I, I was going to hit you up on Facebook, but uh, I was also you trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah, I am um, trying to figure out about, you know, recovering my uh, birthright, you know, with me and my sons and my queen. I want to try right. to, to to go ahead and get that started. Right. Well, you we know. do that too, you know. So just give us a call at that number, you know, we can help you with that also. Okay, Ellie, I'm sorry, and my, my queen, this woman, asked you, how long is the um, the cruise? Because you did send me something on uh, Watch Facebook. March the 21st to 25th, oh, four okay. days. Okay. Watch the 21st through 25th, four days. Okay, four days, okay. All yeah, right. come on and come. Uh, we got the number. You got the number? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have the number still okay. up there on, uh, right. on Facebook. All right, appreciate that. Make, make sure you call it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I sure will. I'm gonna call you uh, <laughs> okay. tomorrow to uh, order that book, man. That one and, right. and the other one that you told me about. Right, and also um, the, about the cruise too. Do you got the number for the cruise? Yeah, yeah, I have a number. On okay. That. All right. Well, I appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thank you. All, All right. right. Thank you. Hey. All right. Bodola. We're getting ready to bring you on. You there? Peace. Kijk, ik heb het gepost op, um, op Tumblr. Nee. Maar hier. Maar nee. hier lichten. Hallo? Yes, greeting. Peace. Peace. Brother Alim Bey? Yes. Yes, it's, it's Boeva from Amsterdam. Yes, brother. How you doing? You got Amsterdam in the house. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for, for all the, the great shows you've been giving through the years. So it's, it's amazing. Um, I have I had a question about uh, the, the Omex and the connection about... Um, because I'm originally from the Congo. And I right. was wondering, how is the, the connection between the, the Omex and the Congolese uh, ancient... Uh, cultures. Um, that is through the um, through the um, Senegalese. Um, it comes from out of the Congo, in which that we spoke about the water, uh, water yeah. um, language, and how that ties into um, the Mandese language. Um, similarities to it, in which that is the Omex. So actually, um, same language means same family line. Yeah. Mhm. Okay. 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 Yeah. And uh, and uh, another question I had about uh, the. The birthright, how 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 is it possible for because I got a Dutch nationality now, but how is it possible for me to reclaim my name, or is it um, only for live in the states? No, no, that's for anywhere in the world because um as we showed you the diaspora um came from out of Africa throughout the world, so um how can it be done just here in America if it came from Africa? <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, only thing you would have to do is simply uh, reclaim it and then um, um, get it put on public record. You can put it in the newspaper. Yeah. And um, that's a done deal. And do you, do you need, like, an extra paper or anything uh, besides the, the ID that you got? Or how, how can you show, like, a, an officer that you're, that you're not part of the, the system no more, that you're... Oh, well, in the same sense in which that once you claim your, uh, reclaim your nationality, um, as you say, Congolese, um, come from Congo, so you would put down your name, full name, um, birth name, and if you want, you can find um, even an older source and um, add that to your name. Uh, what we do here in the States is add El Bay Day or Ali. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that, um, that's for us, you know. That's not necessarily, you know, per se for you. Um, you can actually add your tribal um, connections, you know, which I recommend as the, um, as the surname. 
Okay, okay. Yeah, because I was planning to do that. I was planning to add like the name of my grandfather. Right. You know, some something that's that's before me and that that I don't yeah. use right now, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So it's just basically just you have to um, put it on a, on on the on the papers. On paper, in the form of an affidavit. The website yeah. in which I would recommend to go to in order to um, get some ideas from is www.rvbay. That's R as in righteous, V as in victory. Bay B E Y Publications P U B L I C A T I O N S dot com. That's R V Bay Publications dot com with an S. Make sure you have the S. So you can go there and get some ideas. You go to Freedom Ritz or Ritz of Freedom W R I T S Ritz of Freedom. Yes. And you can check um check out those particular affidavits the way in which they're written up and actually you can um insert your information um, um, into it, and then you can actually go to a newspaper and put um, put your information in the newspaper and use those particular um, use that particular article um, as um, proof, you know, of you giving public notice of your stance and your status. Okay. 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 Yeah, that, that that's basically it. Or the, those two are my questions. I want to thank you very much for all the knowledge you've been bringing through the years. I'm I'm really uh, yeah, you know, listening to everything you guys are doing yeah. and uh, trying to get all the DVDs I can. Well, it's, well, I appreciate it's pretty... it more. Y'all get me over there. What do you say? <laughs> I said I will appreciate it more. Y'all get me over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love I would love to to get you over there. We we should I will hit you all up right. on Facebook and see what we can do. Because I think it's, right. uh, th- there's not a lot of people out here really getting into it, and I would like to, you know, to create like a group of people and to see if we can make things happen over here. Also for uh, like brothers like Bobby Hammett and Panic, and you know, I would like to get all the people over here. Also, it would be right, great. Right. Well, that's what that's what Brother Darren did up in um in um in England in um in London. Yeah. He did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He brought um, me, Phil, Bobby, and um, brother Azariah over. You know, um, um, over the last um five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely mm-hmm. trying, trying to. I'll get you contacts and uh, through Facebook, and we will, we will hook it up. It will be nice. All right, appreciate that, brother. Okay, man. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Area code three four seven. Area code three four seven. You on the line? Peace. Three four seven. Three four seven. Peace, You're peace, alive. peace, Ali. Peace, peace. All right, brother Kyle, from, brother Kyle from New York Republic. Peace to you and your empress. Appreciate that, bro. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Um, real quick, um, can you go into like the um the Battle of Gettysburg? Of Gettysburg. Yes. Well, I, I mean, heard it was one of the. Go ahead. No, I heard that was one of the most bloodiest, um, Moorish European battles over here. That's right. That's what it said. As a matter of fact, there was a um, PBS special a few years ago in which that spoke about the um, the French um, and Indian wars, in which that they had to reveal that the Indians in which they'd be talking about was the Choctaw, which actually were so-called black. And mm. the filler of the information, he said he didn't know why they called it the French or Indian Wars because these were black people. So it's the same okay. thing within the Getty, um, 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 the Getty uh, War, you know, a battle. You know, um, Abraham Lincoln, of course, he had, you know, he gave forth his Gettysburg Address there, in which that, that was one of the most brutal um, battles that we've ever had, you know, with the um, Albion in that regard. And it was always over land. And them trying to um, to extinguish us as far as genocide and us not want to move from our particular land, which is our home. It's very similar to the same thing in which that took place um, on the movie Avatar. Right, right. And th- this took place in the South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This took place in the South. Okay, all right. You clarified that up for me, because I heard it before. I think Tasha Bay had mentioned it, 
But um, I never right. really looked it up. And that was like a couple of years ago I heard that. So now I got something to go and look up. All right. Appreciate that, brother. Thanks a lot. Peace. Peace. We got area code 804. Area code 804, you're on the line. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. peace. Alim, how you doing, brother? All right, doing well, God. How are you? All right, it's 24 Dread from Virginia, brother. All right. All right, yeah, I'd like to ask you a question. See if you can uh, go in on um, the Indians of today or the, uh, yeah, the Indians of right. today, the Pale Indians. Um, right. The, them having uh, their territories uh, carved out and whatnot. How did they end up being put in place? Uh, instead of uh, uh, real simple, through, black mixing, through mixing in, oh, through mixing okay. in, and through the mixing in, stealing of the birthright. So now they're right. able to claim that even though they are one sixteenth um, um, Indian, they can claim um, land ownership. You know, being just one sixteenth, wow. less. You know, um, um, and claim that they have um, ancestral land ties here, but yet they damn near white. <laughs> right. Or white, you know, or pale, as we would say, or Albion. You know, right. so um, this is um, what is actually going on. And the theft of your birthright is coming through us mixing in um, with them as it has always done, you know, and that's how um, these particular tribes got lighter and lighter over the years is through um, genetic population. Right. And so hence our birthright is stolen in that regard. Wow. Okay. One just, just by having a drop of it. Was enough to for them to claim uh, rights. Bingo! Just like they claim that one drop of black blood makes you black. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. That was, yeah. That was all I had to ask. I didn't understand how they could be. Uh, you know, they can get their little land char- carved out and represent. You know, them being. You know, Indian. Uh, right. But we. But we all know that we're natives to this land. So yeah. Okay. All right, exactly. brother. Appreciate it. I right, appreciate you, bro. And right, of brother. course, um, Brother Tremel asked the question about the um, asked the question about the Indians or the Dravidians, and of course, the Dravidians is nothing more than um, Kushites coming from the interior of Ethiopia, Abyssinia, and they are also uh, related to the East people or the Shang or Xi'an people, known as the Omec. All right, if you did um, the Bible, of course, you can go to Genesis 5th chapter and speak about Nimrod um, expanding his territory, being the son of Cush, into Mesopotamia. You know what I'm saying? Um, in Mesopotamia, which is um, Sumer, uh, which is now uh, referred to as Acadia, um, Assyria, all the way into India, um, is all part of that same uh, family line. Of course, that's the biblical story of that. But Kush, a Kushite is actually a tribe known as the Ethiopians, um, in which that um, the Indians um, in India actually are um, have lineage and related to. Okay, um, of course, the home of the Nagas is Patala, you know, which is here in the Americas. As a matter of fact, you can get the book um, by. Um, Mark. Amaru Pinko. The book is named The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. And in the book, Mark uh, Amaru Pinko, he breaks down that the Nagas, this is our home, the Americas. He goes into North America, Central and South America, and he shows um, um, that science. All right? So it's called The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. All right? Uh, matter of fact, that is also within Madame Bavaski's books, in which that um, she speaks about the um, Patalo, on uh, the Patala, in which that um, she says are the Nagas, all right, and is talking about here in the Americans, all right. So um, check that information out. First world order radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building. 
on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 